Well, first of all, um, welcome to DL. Now, for some of you, it's for the first time into DL. And for some of you, um, it's been your second home, maybe your first home in some cases, for thir over 30 years. For those of you visiting for the first time, um, we order some typical, but it's always sunshines here in Motherwell. <laughs> yeah, always. Um, and, it's, and, and it's so appropriate for today's, uh, for today's event. Um, so my name is John Bolton. I'm the recently appointed CEO for Plates Business here in Scotland. I've been working on this for a number of months with many people here today. Um, and it's my job just to guide you through the next uh, hour or so. So first and foremost, today is a great day. It's a fantastic day. Um, a bright spot. It's something of a rarity for the steel sector in recent times. And our, th our thoughts do go out um, to our colleagues who are still facing quite a lot of uncertainty elsewhere in the industry. And we shouldn't really forget that. Um, but, you know, the journey here um, has been a challenging one. It's been emotional. And I have to say, it has involved a great deal of hard work by many parties. Um, when a significant and iconic sector such as steel is threatened, it gets noticed. Exhibit A. Um, there, there is an almost explosive response as workers, communities, trade unions, politicians all look desperately for answers and a solution. And the biggest challenge I find in these situations, because there's been more than one, is to channel all that energy and focus it on a positive outcome. Now here in Scotland, that's exactly what happened. It started with a proclamation from the First Minister that no stone would be left unturned to restart this business. I'm delighted that Nicola Sturgeon has taken time to join us here today. A task force was formed made up of local politicians, council members, trade unions, government agencies and Tata Steel. And I was privileged to be part of that task force and I'm delighted that so many members of that team are here today, including Fergus Ewing, who led the group with determination and tenacity. I would also like to welcome Anna Subri, Minister for Small Business, Industry and Enterprise. The Minister has been front and centre in the battle for the steel industry in the UK for what must feel like years. Um, it's been a, a challenging time. I extend a very warm welcome to the members of the Liberty family, and it is a family, believe me, who have travelled to welcome the new member of the group and in particular to Sanjeev Gupta, Executive Chairman of Liberty House. But most importantly today, and this is the reason we're doing this quickly, most importantly we welcome the team from DL and Clyde Bridge led by Colin Timmins and accompanied by their partners. You have been brilliant. You have been in the eye of the storm um, and your support and your belief has been absolutely essential here. And today you're representing the many employees and families that have been impacted. Today's short ceremony is a thank you to all of you. There will be no doubt further opportunities, but we felt, Sanjeev felt, that it was important sooner rather than later to recognise what has been achieved and to send a signal to future customers that we are back. So I'm going to stop talking now, as I want to hand the microphone over to two major players in this process, as the keys to the plant are passed from Tata Steel to the new owner, Liberty House. Despite his shy and retiring nature, Sanjeev has agreed reluctantly to say a few words. Um, that was meant to be a joke. <laughs> Just in case I was ins you thought I was insulting you. Um, but first I'd like to introduce Tor Farker as exec an executive director of Tata Steel Europe. I'm particularly pleased Tor is here today. You'll be able to spot from his accent that his, this transaction has meant a great deal to him and I thank him and Tata for their support throughout this process. So, John, thank you very much. Only a few words to say. Uh, six months ago, I was here on, on the day uh, we announced that as Tata, uh, we were uh, planning to mop all these plants. And, and I, f I said on that day that I fear the plants wouldn't reopen. I am hugely relieved, very proud of all the efforts of all the people that John's mentioned, uh, that that proved to be over-pessimistic. The steel industry, as John said, is existentially challenged in Europe. We're under challenges, not just from the global economy, but from subsidized Chinese steel. We, we cannot accept that state subsidies should cost high skilled jobs in Europe, in the UK or in Scotland. And we do demand, and we know the governments stand with us uh, to ensure fair competition. And we need to make progress on that. Why, why is it so important? Because we all recognize that steel is the foundation industry. 
Steel is the key to a manufacturing sector, the key to a sustainable economy. And I, I am pleased to see uh, representatives of governments here. We haven't got the Welsh government here, but we know in Wales they're fighting just as hard. And Anna Subri and, and uh, the Minister of State, uh, Saeed Javid, are fighting hard for the UK steel industry, uh, for us worldwide and in Europe. And Scotland has a proud history in steel, from the support that this industry provided to shipbuilding, to locomotive manufacturing, and indeed to North Sea and North Sea Oil. Indeed, the king of the US steel industry, Andrew Carnegie, came from Dunfermline, alongside of Scotland for this plant, of course, but it's still Scotland nonetheless. So, and Scottish steel has a future today. Why? Because we have a willing buyer. Because we had a responsible seller, who I represent. An active government, and indeed active governments, dedicated trade unions, represented by Steve McCool here today, and an exceptional local workforce and management, all pulling together in the task force. So I look forward to watching a successful future for these plants under Liberty and wish a success for that exceptional workforce that they get the future that they've always deserved. And with that, I literally have, and it is actually the key to the plant, Standing here, I'm very conscious that what I do today is inherit what is over centuries worth of proud history of steel making in Scotland. I will do my very best to keep that, keep that history and that heritage and pass it on from generations to come. We, t we start a journey today where I hope we will prove that it is, not, it, is not, it is not a lost cause and steel making in Scotland and in the UK does have a future on a viable competitive basis. I thank everybody, and in particular, and especially, I thank Nicola Sturgeon and her government, who have, who have really taken an extent, it is an example of what they have done. They have taken a leading role. They have not been a bystander. If it wasn't for them, I wouldn't be standing here collecting these keys. So thank you very much, and I thank all of you, and everybody who supported me through this process, and I look forward to your support for times to come. Thank you. It is very much a proud day for, for me, for uh, my family of, and for Liberty. And uh, we hope what we start here today will be the beginning of a, a new era for this, these plants, for Scottish steel, and indeed maybe for British steel as a whole. Uh, steel is, as I've said repeatedly, core to any industrial economy. Uh, it's, it, it, it runs up and down the, the value chain, creating at least 10 jobs for every job which is made, used in making steel, there's another 10 up and down the supply chain. So it's, it's not to be underestimated the impact of, uh, of this industry and we must all do our best to find a way to make it competitive and sustainable and support it in every way we can in that respect. Thank you. This, this uh, statue of Ganesh here is, uh, all, all my Welsh workers will uh, recognize it very well. It's been a great uh, symbol of symbol of good luck, symbol of uh, a new beginning. It has brought a lot of good luck to our plant in Wales. And they are very, very kindly, showing, showing their solidarity, very kindly lent this uh, uh, symbol to, to DL until the plant starts here. So I hope you will bring good luck and good fortune to this plant. And uh, I would like to hand it over to and my new colleagues uh, to look after until, until the plant starts. Thank you. And Bryson, I'm uh, just to embarrass him. Bryson has been here sort of for, over 40 years. Bryson, 42 years. I'm sorry, um, and has been a, you know, a, he's an important engineer on this plant, most experienced electrical engineer that we have. So it was good to to hand over the uh, Ganesh to to Bryson. Thank you. So now